Welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Tights podcast right here on capesandtights.com. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. For episode 101, we welcome comic book creator Scotty Young, one of my favorite illustrators of all time in the world of comics and beyond, as well as an un- unbelievable comic book writer and person. Uh, thank you, Scotty, so much for joining us on this podcast. Before you listen to this podcast where we talked I Hate Fairyland, The Me You Love in the Dark, Twig, Marvel Baby Variants, Run the Jewels, and so much more. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as record, uh, uh, follow, subscribe, rate, and review on Spotify and Apple. Five stars only, please. But you're here to listen to Scotty Young chat about comic books with myself right here for episode 101. So enjoy, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, Scotty. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful here up in Maine. You're in the you're in the middle of the United States, right? We are in Kansas City, yes. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> right in the dead. Yeah, pretty much in the middle. I've been in Illinois a lot most of my life, and now I'm in Kansas City for about five years. So that's a, that's good. We're up here in the Northeast. It's it's, it's a nice temperature out. Not too too bad. Uh, it's that's like cool. 66 in my office, so it's a little a little chilly, but uh, <laughs> we're making this happen. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on, chatting with us. So, Thanks for having me. What I like to start off with with people who come on the podcast is talking about your origin story. I mean, I'm a big fan of Scotty Young, so I know a lot about this, but maybe some people out right. there don't. So right. let's go way back. Let's talk about how you got into comics as a fan and then right. uh, morph that into like how you became a comics creator in general. I became a fan of, well, I started reading Mad Magazine when I was a kid. I had a paper out. And I, I lived in a very small town and we had one grocery store and that's what sold comics and magazines. And um, I was, I had the paper, so I read the comics in there, you know, the, the Sunday comics and the daily comics, Calvin and Hobbes and Peanuts and all that. Um, and I fell in love with Mad Magazine over the years. And um, eventually it, somewhere in elementary school, I got a box back in the day, when back in my day, <laughs> they in the Christmas catalog, the JC Penney's catalog, the Sears catalog or whatever, they sold these, uh, Marvel would sell these like boxes of basically like remainder comics, like, mm-hmm. like a grab bag. They just throw whatever in that box. You ordered it from the Christmas catalog and a relative had gotten that for me for Christmas. So it was this big box of random comics. It was like GI Joe comics, X-Men comics, Daredevil comics. There was an Alf comic in there that I didn't know who he was at the time, but now <laughs> I now knowing it was a Bill Sienkiewicz cover to a Alf Ooh. issue. Wow. It's just strange. Uh, um so that was kind of my first exposure to comics but i still lived in a small town and i didn't understand what they were and how they worked and like what you know and so it wasn't until sometime in junior high that i was with my at this point i had moved to tennessee for a while and i was at a mall and there ended up being a comic book shop and this was right when image comics and death of comic was launching death of superman was happening so it was all this big stuff. So I was like, oh, this comic stuff. And I love to draw. So yeah, we just kind of like, it was the right time, right? I'm right there in that age of 13, 14. So Spawn is just the shit, you know? I'm like, that's mm-hmm. so cool. Um, and that then it pretty much was just me into being into comics. And from that point on through high school, um, that's where the fandom came. And then, you know, was, once I found the comics, I really started liking. Then I started really becoming, a you know, Generation X and, Read, you know, Spawn was definitely one of the first comics that I bought from number one and just kept buying it. You know, I think I bought that one through maybe 200. I think, I, I think I just bought the whole run and I had it in a, in a box for years, but yeah. So that's kind of the, the, the quick answer to what's my fan origin story. It's really just, it all started with mad magazine and, and went from there. That's, that's awesome. And then obviously uh, being an artist and then getting a chance to actually illustrate comic books uh, and, right. and how did I mean? How did you must be dreaming uh, now that actually you get to do this for a living? But like, how did that get started? How did that morph from a fandom into a career? Uh, so I never thought about it doing it as a job when I was in high school, but until uh, again, the internet really wasn't a thing yet. Mm. Um, they had net computers were networked together, but there was some sort of software program that had all these colleges plugged into it, and if you went in and uh, this this career counselor came to our school one day, I think when I was a junior, 
in high school and, and was like, you take like a personality test and then this pro it gets with this program and it shoots out like these kind of like these colleges that would have, uh, you know, a major that you could, that, Oh, you're going to be a good lawyer, go to this school or whatever. And I took that test and it came out a uh, illustrator painter or whatever. And one of the schools on the list was the Joe Hubert school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was so cool that there was a comic, the college for comic books. I was like, what? are you serious um so i sent off got the catalog for that man the catalog was so cool i had paintings from like joe jesco in it and all these like really cool artists that 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 teach there whatever and that's the first time that i thought like oh maybe i can i don't know what that means but maybe i could get a job doing comics but to me getting a job doing comics was making up your own comic Mm -hmm. like image style right like that's Mm -hmm. just what i thought you did i I never in a million years had the dream to go draw Spider-Man because in, you know, in that immature head of mine, like somebody had that job, yes. like, you know, it's like, you don't want to be that job because somebody already has a job. And I wasn't quite, I wasn't quite understanding that a lot of people drew it. I wasn't that, I didn't get all that quite yet. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was realizing like through that college, the Joe Kubert school, like, well, if there's a college for this, then maybe you can get a job doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I started to think about it, you know, where I started like, but then you quickly realize like, oh, there really is no way to just make it your job. You have to make a comic, sell the comic. Um, so I started thinking, I was always a, a hustler in a way. So I was always thinking of the business side before I was thinking about the creative side. So <laughs> I would start thinking of the company and like, okay, where am I going to print this? And meanwhile, I have no ideas yet. <laughs> There's no comic book. <laughs> I'm already looking at printers and getting paper samples and all this for my indie comic. Um, and that just kind of went on. And I was also into music and I thought I produced a lot of hip hop beats and DJ and wrapped and stuff like that so i thought maybe i'd be into music um and and then eventually i moved to chicago and and met a person at a graham cracker comic shop joe curry he's Mm -hmm. a self-publisher here in town or in there in chicago and was like oh i'm gonna do this indie book your art's awesome you want to draw it and i was like yeah so i was like whoa i'm gonna draw a comic he had the script written and everything i did some character designs i did a cool like little coming soon poster and then um Chicago Wizard World was coming up and um Joe his uh his company is called Strictly Underground and he self-published two or three titles at that point mm-hmm. bailed him out himself you know just uh, he's yeah. a lot clerk and and uh so I was like hey you can come sit with us at our outer sally table at Wizard World and I was like awesome so I had my big ass portfolio you know no comic writers <laughs> are in it and he printed up printed up some coming soon posters with that one drawing I did um and at the time a a guy came by the table i was actually i smoked back then so i was out smoking of course and (laughs) when i came back he was like man somebody from image comics stopped by the table and they love your stuff and they left you a card i was like what i I wasn't quite sure how the business of of, Mm -hmm. at that time you image was the same as marvel to me so i just was like cool i'm gonna be so rich now of course you know (laughs) with none of i have no ideas i have no I barely have, I've never drawn a full comic book before. I think I may have done a few pages. I'm thinking of, I've got it made because, Mm -hmm. and and, uh, so I get the card and I plan on calling this guy after the convention's over, which I do. That guy, he did work at Image. I mean, he didn't work at Image. He had a, he was self, he was publishing books at Image as well. Yeah. And he was looking for books to, um, some young creators to pitch some books. And, um, that person was C.B. Sobolski, <laughs> who now is the <laughs> editor in chief of Marvel Comics. But back then, I was just an artist trying to get a, guy, a gig, and he was, uh, you know, a little self starter at Image trying to get some creators to do books. So we we're both trying to break in comics. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, then we start talking on the phone a lot, kicking ideas around. Um, eventually, he started doing some things at Marvel with the MangaVerse stuff, like they were yep. connected with him. And then he he was out one night and an editor uh, needed a, he knew that CB knew a lot of artists and he asked if anybody, he's like, hey, do you know any artists that could like turn a book around pretty fast? Like Carl Kershaw was drawing an Iceman miniseries at the time. I didn't know Carl then, I know him really well now, but <laughs> he, 
he fell behind or something happened, but he couldn't do an issue. So they needed to fill in and CB just gave him my name. He was like, yeah, my friend Scotty, he's he could crush it. And, and uh, that was it. Like I did an issue in Iceman and six months later I got the legend of the spider clan mini series and yep. I've been at Marvel for about 22 years now. So it's, it's one of those things, man. It's just like right place, right time. Talk a good game, fake it till you make it. All all of the cliches just stacked up on top of each other, you know? Yes, exactly. And it's kind of funny. Uh, you mentioned the whole like filling in and someone behind. I was at a comic convention this weekend, uh, our comic show in New Hampshire, and Al Milgram was there uh, signing mm-hmm. autographs and, and talking to people and stuff like that. And he inked like six pages of Lethal Protector. Right. And he's like, I don't know. It's his the highest royalties a check ever from Marvel. <laughs> and it was six pages. And he's like, and right. I don't, I, one day, like later on, the guy who actually inked the rest of the book, he was like, why did you have not have time to do these six pages? He goes, my house burnt down. Oh my and, God. <laughs> and he goes, I'm really sorry, but still I'm thankful for this largest royalty also, check from Marvel. You, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, can you play yeah, Adam sign it? Cause I'm like, that's a good story to have. I'll just I'll keep this, uh, this uh, book here, but I was just laughing how that works. And, and I, sure. I have that Iceman issue, uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> it, it's, it's a, uh, it's old Scotty Young for sure. It's very <laughs> it's original old. Scotty Young. It's, um, so it's definitely old. Didn't know what I was doing. Scotty Young for sure. I mean, come on, you, you knew what you were doing. Just it's not the Scott that yeah, I just wasn't there yet. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. you weren't perfection yet, right? You're right, perfect now. No, <laughs> um, and obviously that transformed over the years into other things. I mean, now you're kind of known as the baby variant Marvel artist uh, out there, right. and and which is uh, you know, it, hey, you found your niche and you found it. it, it it's hard to say. I was trying yeah. to talk to my my LCS the other day. My LCS owner. Uh, uh, Paul Eaton of Galactic Comics is also a hum- humongous fan of your your oh, artwork, cool. and and he, we were talking. It was like, you, there's no one else really like you. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Like I no one else has tried to sure. mimic that. No one else has tried to really like. Maybe there's small number of people, but it's not like a another right. person who's like, oh, I'm gonna try to do this same thing with my artwork. Uh, right. There's other co- cover artists that are like extremely known i mean sure, it comes sure. like, like peach's work is very oh, yeah. known and stuff like that. I, yeah i've got so many peach pieces out here in my yeah Excuse but it's just me. kind of funny like it's kind of funny how you got this 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 niche and then no one else really was like i'm gonna jump on board that you're just like in a lane by yourself <laughs> it's you know what it's interesting because th- these things aren't really controllable right like mm-hmm. you, like i'm not the first person to ever do little cute versions of 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 you know popular characters whether movie or you know the the chibi style characters in japan have been going forever yes um i never really was it's not that i'm not a manga fan i just wasn't exposed to it a lot it, it, i was from such a small town and again I'm, I'm at an age where that's we didn't have we didn't have all that on our television we didn't have access to manga so that kind of whole thing kind of missed me but again like i'm a huge comic strip fan so I grew up with Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes and, and Family Circus and Dennis the Menace. And so I love that world. Um, so in my mind, that's what the that's what it was. You know, at first it was just a cover for uh, Midtown Comics. I mean, mm-hmm. literally I got a job. Like I did a lot of covers at the time. And they were like, hey, Midtown wants to do an exclusive for Adventure versus X-Men number one. Um Somebody had asked me to do the X babies for the Heroes Con badges years ago. And George, who ran the cover uh, up at Marvel, who ran the cover program, was like, I told him that you did these really cool baby X Men once for those badges. What if you did that for this Midtown cover? And I was like, oh, that'd be fun. That's cool. I mean, it, I didn't, it was just a job. Like, it's not yes. what I did. Yes. It's not anything that I was like, yeah, I'm going to plot my takeover of the cover <laughs> dominion of comic books. <laughs> I literally did one cover with like 30 some characters on it. Avengers and X-Men fighting. Um, I remember finishing it and literally like the next, like the next morning got on a plane to Germany because I was, I was still doing Oz books and stuff at the Mm -hmm. time and uh, went over there for a tour. And that cover ended up selling like a bajillion copies, (laughs) you know, it ended up being huge for them. And then uh, Marvel came to me and was like, Hey, we're getting ready to relaunch all these books branded marvel now yep. so there all the creators were switching and going to new books so it was kind of a weird per- again kind of right time right place and they were like what if we, we, we they, they had been doing these cover programs where they're doing a theme you know like play on this or a bully theme or whatever and they were like what if you do you want to do i want to say they gave me 10 covers and i had never been assigned 10 covers 
at a, ever. <laughs> like, it was always just here's a cover, or you're doing the the cover for this series, so it's one at a time. Then they were like, "You want to do the 10, 10 number ones?" And I was like, "Oh man, that's crazy." Yes. So started that. Just did a couple of those, and by the time I got about five of them done, they were like, "You want? Can we add five more?" I was like, five more?" And then basically each week, you know, the, they would just have basically they yeah. were just adding books to the schedule, and it within a couple months. I was scheduled out for the year with at least one or two covers a week, which was nuts. Cause I was like, wow, like even if I don't draw comics anymore, like the actual interiors, I've got yeah. enough stuff going on. And then it just took off. Like I can't, I could not have predict. I, and for the, for at least two years of doing it, I still didn't realize that that's what people just thought I was, what I did. <laughs> I still thought it was like this little side hustle. Like I'm drawing, Oz, and then I'm writing, drawing, and then I started writing and drawing Groot or uh, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, and you know, so th- in my head, I'm still just this guy, and uh, like moonlighting as like, oh, I'm doing these fun gags, and I treated them like comic strips. Like it was less about a cool pose and showing you how good I draw, and more about a gag. Like I just yeah. wanted, to, I've always wanted to do a comic strip, and I thought, well, this is my way to do it. Like I'll just do a one a one image gag on you know if I can. And I think that's what separated it. Cause again, I, I'm not the first person to draw. I'm not the first person. I don't think I'm the best person, mm-hmm. but I think that I make sure that there's a narrative happening there that we are all in on the joke because we're mm-hmm. all big, we're all big nerds and it's fun to make fun of the things we love. And so poking fun at ourselves and our comics and our favorite stuff a little bit. I think that's what created the lane that you're talking about. And, and then also, I think I just did so many that then it triggers like a collector, like it's like it's like garbage pail kids now. It's like even if you don't like it, you're getting the next one. I know you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that and it, it's also uh, you know it's funny. We were at that same convention, me and my local comic shop owner, and we were like we we're collectors. So he was like you know collecting different ones and so right. on and so forth. And he uh, would go up like the most of it was like gold and silver, like a lot right. of gold and silver comics and all that stuff. And we were, like he would go up to the, the the owner of the the booth and say, "Hey, you got any Scotty Young covers?" And he's like, "Who?" <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, because this guy was like, I've got these old Captain America here and stuff like that, and it was just kind of like right. a weird, like he didn't even get that there's a collector's market and there's people who want these things, right. these special covers, and it is there's people who also, you know, no offense, there's also people who hate it, like there's also people who are just like, oh right, get this thing away from me, like I don't want this is not a traditional cover, this is a weird obscure right. cover, and I, I, I mean I can understand why someone's like that, but like there there's this list of my favorite comic book artists and and, and, and yes scotty you fall on that and part oh, of it is you. and part of it is is the thought process that also goes into it it's not as simple as a cool action pose on the front sometimes you know when you have right. galactus eating earth like a cereal bowl and things right, like that right. it's the same reason why michael del mundo finds and falls on that list for me is it's because genius. sometimes the stuff that he does and you look at it, you're like how the hell did a human being think of this being this way and, right. and the same sometimes with the, like with yours it's like I guess the question that comes out of this is how do you come up with new ver you've done so many now. It's like, how many times can you draw Punisher on the front of a comic book and well, also understand in a different way? Like, how does it like, I had this it- conversation today cause I'm doing another, a Spider-Man cover today. <laughs> and I was like, I am fairly certain that I have drawn all the Spider-Man poses that exist. All the ones that are possible with this little body, right? Yes. Like, these, these little versions are so like, you know, the, their arms only move so much, you know? So I don't know. That's the challenge. That's the fun challenge of it. And the cool thing is like, you know, my kids are always growing. So there's always new jokes happening at home or luckily the stories are always changing. So there's always something to, to have a little fun with. And I don't know, I, I maybe cause I just need to keep putting food on the table. I'm going <laughs> to find the ideas. It, 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 yeah. You know, like so what the new guardians of the galaxy when it came out had a similarity to the uh, Chewbacca with the sure, riding yeah. the ride, but it's like, right. they were still different. And, and honestly, I don't even care to me personally because it was also far enough away. I mean, that Chewbacca comic book came out. Oh yeah, and I've seven, done that eight years the, ago. The ride, the ride one, I do a lot. Like I yeah. circle back to, I circle back to a theme because it's still fun. Like mm-hmm. those quarter ride machines outside of Kmart's and Walmart's growing up, uh, they're hilariously dumb rides that every yes. kid on earth wanted to get on. And the cool thing is, is, like I always like to have some sort of some sort of set or something going on and that they make for a great and because each set gets to be different it almost becomes 
a collector set within the grander scheme of the the, the young variants or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I want all the ride ones because I've done the Marauders. They're on a pirate ship. Yep. I've done Rocket or Guardians of the Galaxy. They were on a, I've done a couple Guardians of the Galaxy ones now where they're on a Rocket. One's on Rocket going around the planet. Like I'm, you know, just variations on a the theme. It's like a, you know, it's like an NFL playbook or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> they're all kind of similar, but they tweak, you tweak them here and there. And, that, and that's, like I said, that's the fun of it, too. When you see a new one coming out, you don't know what it's going to be or, right. or whatnot and, and so on. And they're just so, I don't know, they're just so fun. It brings it back to that comic strip part, like you said. Like, it brings, like, right. some of these books that you've drawn these baby variants or young variants for right. are serious books, like, inside. Like, yeah. some of the things that are being said, oh, yeah. like, like, people are dealing with, not, I mean, they're obviously sure. fake. It's all this comic world. But, like, right. you look at the cover of it, you're like, this person looks like they're having fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. Like, I, and that's, that's where I am still just th like, you know, again, if you go back to Calvin and Hobbes, like, yeah. you know, every winter they revisit the snowman theme. Like it's not mm -hmm. copying himself. It's just revisiting the theme. And like, can I say something new with it? Can I make mm -hmm. you laugh with it again? Like, um, so yeah, it's fun. Well, we'll see, I, I, the people who are also followers of you and fans of you like to collect the covers and things like that, but there's also your books and your right. actual books that you've created yourself and so on right. and so forth. And, and one of the great ones is obviously I hate fairyland uh, that you wrapped up the original, the original run of 20 issues right. or so was in 2018. Uh, we mm -hmm. just recently, uh, you know, what back in, the, in December, November, December, November. Mm -hmm. Yep. November. Uh, yeah. November, probably November. Yeah. November came out with, uh, you know, the, the, the next issues. Actually, the first question I had is, was there a decision to make it number one and not 21? Yeah, I I mean, I just thought like, oh, it's been gone for a while. I knew it would be a little different. Um, so, and I mean, number ones usually sell a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Um, because, because they're number ones. And yeah. because it was such a big gap. Um, but we did number the trade five five yeah i saw that today yeah, yeah so yeah. so we're gonna add that to that um i don't even know how i feel about that but we're kind of going we were going and i was like all right um i mean in hindsight would it have sold if it would have been 21 i don't know like it would have sold the same numbers but um number ones get collectors excited yeah yeah now you know eventually i'm probably going to do a play on it and be like this is the third fourth number one but uh, you know i'll do some i hate fairylandish gag with me messing the numbers up but well, I mean, uh, what was it? Uh, is it Sex Criminals? The Zarsky did like the last issue was number sixty nine, even though it wasn't issue oh, sixty nine. Right, right, right. It was like, yeah. right. <laughs> but like it. I, I just think the completionists for the trades are going to like the fact that it says one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, th and yeah, the it, trade you know, works for sure. Like the singles, yeah. to me, the singles are a monthly thing. Yeah. So you know, if if I have a little bit more, if this sells a little bit more, then the creators get everybody gets paid, and we can keep making creator own comics for longer then that's cool. But yeah, I figured the trade, I'm the same way. Like I want to know which one's coming in order and everything. Yeah. And, and, and so Gertrude is the main character. And I, I, funny thing is, is because you had this series come out, you know, five years ago is when it ended and, and, and you know, a number of years ago, obviously it started. Right. I hate spoiling it for people still because you came up with a new volume that right. it, you still can go back and buy those trades and read up right. to this point. And I felt like if it was over, Okay, right. whatever. People have a lot long sure. enough time to do it. But now I feel like I still don't want to spoil it. But however, Gertrude yeah. stuck in Fairyland. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you've now, like it's your child that's grown up and she's now grown up with you drawing her this long or creating her this long? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spoil too much either because there's yeah. something cool. There's something cool coming up that I hit on a, co a couple of weeks ago when I was. The thing I like about I hate Fairyland is I make a vast majority of a vast majority of it up as I'm going along. Yeah. Like it's not a book like Middle West or Strange Academy where I've got to have you know 20 issues in my head mapped out. This one is like, what do I want to do this month? And as it occurs to me, I'll be like, I'm putting it in. Sometimes it puts me in a corner and I got to really figure out how to get out of it in the next one. But yeah, it definitely feels like it feels like it's grown up a little bit and also not, I mean, it's still kind of a reflection of me, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm a kid, but I'm not, and I'm grown up, but also I'm not. So, it's like, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is awesome to be back in that world and that kind of that level of freedom. So it de definitely feels when I was, when I was ending it after 20, you know, I was just, it was so much work for 15 mm -hmm. of those issues. I edited it myself. You know, I did every, like, I didn't let her, but I mean, I edited it and, you know, managed it and talked with the, everybody at image and, 
while writing and drawing it. So it was so much work. Now I have a great editorial staff and, and production and everybody's now, you know, well, I've got a lot of hands, so it's much easier now, but, be, but because of all that, I needed that break after 20, I just was like exhausted. And, um, now that I did take that break, uh, much longer than I thought I would, yeah. but, um, uh, taking that break is like, now I'm like excited to be back and like, Oh man, this is what a fun, what a fun thing that I've created here. Um, that feels like my world, you know? And yeah. It, it, the cool thing now is that we're doing um that we're doing uh the spin-offs of like untold tales mm -hmm. of you know and and so it's like now i have people writing and drawing stories based on my stuff that we're publishing and and uh uh that's awesome like and uh, you know now even with the second one having brett handle the art chores on it while i just get to write is amazing because he's so good <laughs> he's so good he is but he, and he's also not drastically different than what you were right. doing before so Brett it's like not I, a culture shock for someone right brett and i are the same age we come from the same inspiration we come we're just everything we just come from the same sources so when, even when we met before this was ever even an option i was just like man i just love your art because i see all all the same things you love i love um and i remember he did a pinup in the first round and i told him was like if i if I were to ever give up art on this you are like the person i'd want to take it over and that was years ago and so when it came time, I was like, I was serious. Do you want to take it over? And man, it's, it's like watching my, it's like watching the characters I created come to life and not feel foreign, but mm -hmm. almost like, my like, God, this is so exciting for me. Cause I'm getting to watch it happen, but I didn't have to do all the heavy lifting. of it. <laughs> I get to cheat a little bit. Someone else can do that for you. And you also get the benefit now it being such longer, like a five years later, Right. Uh, and also the fact that you've met people and you've worked with other people that like the right. variant covers are cool now too because you also do we mentioned peach right. you know Momoko, like those kind of covers that come out and, and other people have jenny frenzen has a cover. like all these covers are out there now that you when back when you originally right. released it was basically what covering the the, the fuck barrier yeah it was and, just and the, the the right. two covers right yeah. and you know a lot a portion of that too was like at the beginning like not knowing what the sales were going to be like mm -hmm. you know like i just couldn't afford to go out and pay you know these baller baller you know cover artist <laughs> to come in if i didn't know the book was and you really don't know the book's going to be you know you're you're well into issue four five or six by the time you get sales numbers for one two or three yeah so it's a really kind of a gamble a lot when you're doing creator own comics because it's all you like it's if it does not sell then you worded a lot of work for free <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah it's i don't know it's, it's i've also seen it like i, I feel like I mean, gertrude is older now like she's I don't know. Did you have this? I guess my thought process on this is: Did you have the time jump in how the beginning of of first issue of this new volume planned out when you ended it before? Like you knew where you were going with this? Nope. No, nope, that's my that's the per that's exactly what I was saying. I was like, yeah, knew I was ending her where I it, where I put her at at the end of the first twenty. Um, and then when I decided to relaunch, it was like, all right, how do I do it? Like, how do you get her? Yeah, how do I get her back? And then it was a real decision whether or not. I was going to bring back the girt that everybody knows. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of the brand, right? Like that's like, and then being like, man, am I, but then I thought, you know what? Creator own comics is the thing you do risky shit with. So, you know what? Yeah. Everybody is used to this version of girt, but let's just stick with this, this new version for now and see what happens. And, uh, and I I've, yeah, so it's, 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 it's fun just to make it up. I laughed because uh, was it issue was it issue four the the blurred out version issue yeah or three it was yeah three. Uh, I just yeah. when I saw I, I get both copies and my LCS yeah. owner he's a collector as well and I walk in there and I'm just like so I have Gert tattooed right oh, here yeah, and awesome. I was like this is the this is my baby Gert now she's all mature <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna blurred out cover now oh my god yeah. it's okay <laughs> uh, like I said I don't want to give any spoilers. Yeah. But there's some really cool <laughs> shit coming up, like ballsy shit. Yes, that I'm so pumped about. I'm so That's pumped. That's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. It, it's fun. It's fun to go back to the. I say back to the well, but back to the uh, uh, the story that you created and so on and so right. forth over at Image. But in between, you did a couple of fun things too. You did obviously the Me You Love in the Dark. Uh, obviously, you've done Bully Wars. You've done Twig. Right. Uh, you've been working at Strange Academy over at Marvel. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you've had the ability to do some other things. I mean, right. it, as much as Twig is a different thing. It still has 
Scotty Young imprint on it. Like you have your stamp on right. it. It has that similarity, right. wacky world creations yep. and things like that. Um, yep. Are we, are we seeing more of that? Was there going to be more twig? First of all, is there going to be oh, more? Yeah. I don't know if, Kyle okay. and I have definitely, we knew that we weren't going to, we knew that we weren't going to be able to just do it. Like first volume, second volume, third, like right away. Yeah. Um, so Kyle's been away. Like we, we get together every couple of weeks at, at our bar here and you have some wings and some drinks and like, he shows me what d- new doodles he's been doing and then we brainstorm something. So that is really like a true creative collaboration mm-hmm. of just like us having a great time, you know? And so it's like, so it has that imprint on it. My friend pointed out to me, and I didn't even realize it, but like that there's the main character and the, and the tag along character right. in Twig. Yeah, that's, it's also in, <laughs> if I, I always, yeah, and also in middle West, I have yep. a real issue with, uh, I just need my characters that go on journeys to be able to talk to some people. Yes. And so I did, I did, uh, there was a me and Jorge's new book that we're working on right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, he suggested something. I was like, dude, I can't do it again. <laughs> I was like, I've got it. People are going to be like, all right, this guy's getting, it's getting a little old with the, the little, the main character and the small sidekick character. So uh, I broke, I broke the chain with this new Jorge and I are working on a new, uh, new series right now. So. Because I mean, even even the me you love in the dark, she talks to the house like the the creature. Yeah. Like yeah. there's like, at least someone else there. Like, Listen, I know I'm a one trick pony, buddy. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I was like, I but the funny thing is, is I've read your books for a while, and I didn't it didn't even dawn on me for. He just like had to remind right. me, like, hold on a second. I'm like, wait, Middle West, yeah, but but it's cool. I think it's I think it's fun, and they're and they're captivating. So it's not like it's like, oh my God, here he goes again. Well, it's, it's, it, it is it, work. It works. It's a way for me. It's a way for me to to character develop through story and not through narration Mm -hmm. i've never been not that i'm not a fan of when people do it i've never been able to feel comfortable reading my own stuff that way i always feel like it's a little over the top so um uh, yeah i usually that's what's helped me there where i can get a lot of story when they're just traveling from place to place we get to show a lot of cool visuals and give you a lot of story without having to have you know this big long blocky narration that's awesome. And, and so in Strange Academy, obviously that's a different thing because for a while there you were doing image in your own stuff. Right. And then now you're 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 back to working in the pages of a Marvel book. Obviously, you're just writing the book, you're not actually drawing the book, but like so that was like different from back in the day. But is it something you're continually wanting to do too? Is working with Marvel like this too? Or are you gonna well, still try to focus a lot on with my relationship with Marvel's always been great? And um I'm still like again, still scheduled on covers for a long time. Um <laughs> I wrote, so I did a really long, so I did Rocket Rocket for a while, mm-hmm. followed that right up with a couple trades of Deadpool. Um, and then when I was working on Deadpool is when I pitched Strange Academy and I wrote 24 issues of that. Uh, I mean, we just ended that. So mm-hmm. 24, I don't know which, I think the last issue is getting ready to come out. But um, that, and that's what we planned. We planned for 24. We told the story that we planned. Um, I don't know what, I don't, know what would be next at marvel right now currently but i'm in that great place where when the right thing comes up it's a ooh, where can we put this where can we put that um so yeah i right now i don't have any plans but it's just because we've not sat down and talked i strange academy was such a big long process you know we started it before a pandemic went through a pandemic got, you know we've had a, a strange ride um and so i'm not gonna few more create your own things off before i dive into anything mm. quite yet there but you know, I still feel like I never leave because I'm <laughs> like, I got a Spider-Man cover on my screen right now. Got a Deadpool cover I just did. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty entrenched. It, 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 the funny thing is, is that for like, for the longest time, I, I'm a big Marvel fan as well. And, and I think Strange Academy was the first thing in, uh, in a long time that has potential for on-screen stuff and other media adaptations of right. it as well, which is pretty cool uh, to see your imprint on that. And, and you mentioned doing a Deadpool cover and a Spider-Man cover. I have a a question from someone uh, who said, um, do you get to pick and choose which Marvel covers you get, or do they tell you which covers you have to do? Well, they give me a list and they ask me. So they're like, hey, do you want to? And then they give me the list of ones they want me to do. Um, I usually say yes. Every now and then I'll say no, because I'll just feel like, I don't know. Like, I don't know that I have any more ideas for that one or, you know, or I don't know that I'm going to, if I'm not going to have an interesting or, or currently or the schedule or whatever, but most of the time I say yes. And they're, I mean, I don't, I think they've only asked me to change something on a cover like 
in the last so i've been doing these like almost 11 years now yeah and i think they may have asked me to change something maybe th- three times like and, and it's because i literally just got uh, you know oh that costume's not that one you know yeah. but never con they've never really i mean they might edit something to my word balloons or something but you know whatever it's their stuff but um <laughs> uh yeah but as far as really being able to do what i want it's pretty free like Mm -hmm. i've i've really i mean i've had a really great relationship with with marvel and my editors on all the books that i've written and not just drawn but but it's pretty easy going as Mm -hmm. far as like you know they they pretty much let us go and but i've been there long enough too that i'm not you know i'm not trying to break any break any laws while i'm while i'm (laughs) Does that go the same way with uh with uh, uh variants outside of Marvel? You are I'm guessing you have some sort of input on that, but do people reach out to you or are you like I really like this person's book, I want to do something for it? Well, I will do I don't nowadays I don't do much work for higher stuff for anybody. Yeah. Usually the variants I'm doing now are like my company here, yeah. Stupid First Mess. Yeah. We we go and um do the scottyyoung.com yeah. exclusive. So really it's more us going like, ooh, I want to do this one, I want to do that one. Ooh, I think this is gonna be fun or this book's gonna be big or or stuff like that. So really it's just us picking and choosing now. And your website actually gives you the ability to do that because obviously having uh-huh. 500 or 600 copies of a book is hard to sell unless you have a website to do it. With. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> like I have to do my own cover, but I've got, I just got to sit on all these covers because <laughs> I just want to do the cover. <laughs> Maybe at a convention somewhere, someone will buy one. No, right, uh, right. stupid fresh mess. Uh, your website uh, the store obviously helps with that. Yeah. Um, my ca- tattoo artist wanted to know too is what's it like? I mean, he's tattooed my my LCS. He's tattooed me. I like what one? We got yeah, my, yeah, my on the jewels. I got yeah. Venom oh, here. Word. I got Nova. You got some good ones, man. Um, you're obviously Richard Gert. Yeah, he does. He's he loves doing them. He does it on me. He's done. My LCS owner has about four or five, and then another person who comes uh, comes into his shop. What's it like seeing your artwork on someone's skin? <laughs> You know what? At first, I, I still think it's pretty crazy. Like, I think it's great. Like, um, I mean, obviously, like, I'm a tattoo guy and I get all the stuff that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's crazy to me because I'm like, man, that's something I drew. Like, I just, you know, and now it's just on you. Like, mm-hmm. um, but man, it's so flattering. It's so cool. Like, you know, who grows up and thinks, yeah, I'm going to draw all this stuff. And then all these other people in the world are going to go, um, go get this stuff permanently put on them forever you know it's not like me just buying a print and hanging it on the wall like i literally had to right. sit through pain yeah, for no, a couple of hours and that and that's where you know like you are really in you know like yes. i remember the first time i saw somebody with like a full like odd sleeve like it was just her whole arm um and i was just like that's crazy like but i get it because i'm like that like you mm-hmm. know i get the same stuff that i want you know um, so yeah, you know, I think it's I think it's super cool. I think it's really cool. That's all. And he'll continue doing. He says like as long as you continue making artwork that he can. He, like, he goes. It's also it sounds so stupid to say, but he's like it's not easy. But he likes to tattoo what he also likes. So like you know having that artwork and having the way you do your artwork, he's like I like doing it. So like I enjoy the time of actually sitting right. here and and doing the work right. on something. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And, and and so like I'm big fan of Run the Jewels as well. And obviously you're a hip hop guy too. So obviously yeah, yeah. that was must have been an amazing partnership to be able to do with them. That was really cool. I have been I mean I've been a Killer Mike fan for a long time, but I've been an LP fan since the company Flow Days. So like 96, 97. Mm-hmm. Like you know that's right around the world I was graduating high school when I was listening to Company Flow. So like for me, it's still crazy that now everybody knows who LP is, right? Like for me, is he's just been like this really underground guy my whole life. Um, um, that is just like when that came up, though, those two were like, they actually acted like it was more of an honor. They're like, we're huge comic geeks, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, um, so that was really, uh, that was really cool to experience for me because again i'm such a huge hip-hop fan i was such a huge lp fan for so long um that yeah i was uh that was a really flattering cool moment to get to be a part of and it's a a, a hard to get cover for you by the way just to let you know i don't know if you know oh no i know yeah it's (laughs) super rare yeah like i was this close to ebaying a mexican variant of it yeah, it's because really, it that would have a really the has a really glossy cover on it. Yes. Yeah. And it was just kind of funny. I'm like, there's like a few of them that are out there that are just like really extremely hard to get. And that's one right. of them. And it's like thinking in your head, 
couple hundred dollars in this book or buying right. a couple hundred dollars worth of other books is right. a hard decision to make. So I just ended up getting it tattooed instead. There you go. Right. The there. only, <laughs> the only regret that I have is I wish I like after the fact, like I did, cause it was an issue of Deadpool yes. and I did the Deadpool cover and the style of the run the jewels uh, logo. But in hindsight, I wanted, I was like, damn it. Why didn't I put run the pools? I should have done it. <laughs> I, did, I thought of that pun way later, but you know, whatever. Well, you got to do it again now. You're still yeah, doing yeah, stuff on Marvel. Run the Jewels yeah. is still coming out with our music. Huge, like you just yeah. got to do it again, right? You know, so, well, so I'm, I'm a graphic designer for a brewery, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, he, they do brewery collaborations too. I'm like, let's go. I want to do yeah. a Run the Jewels brewery, brewery awesome. collaboration. We'll get it happen. Um, that's pretty funny, though. It, it, it's tattooing is a fun thing, and, and Run the Jewels. Great in the jewels, love this. Like, it's my first, uh, second tattoo, so it was really a lot of fun to do. And he, um, Jay, my tattoo artist, was like, The yellow has stayed very well in Thanos. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's missing the chain, but that's just obviously because of size. Yeah, of the yeah it's but, actually, yeah. yeah, it's okay, it looks good. <laughs> um, so well, finishing, I don't want to finish up here too, I don't want to take too much of your time, but there's a couple things. Is one is grab obviously, Me, You Love in the Dark is available uh, uh, in trade, Twig is available in trade. Uh, Strange Academy Finals is coming out April 26th. This issue six comes out of that. Obviously, I Hate Fairyland it returns again after the trade, yep. the break between volumes yep. here um, is on June 21st is that uh, uh, date. The trade is also out that day, right? Trade five is right. out that same yep. day, uh, which is great. The I had Kyle Starks on. <laughs> Yep. For episode 100, which is this is episode 101. So Kyle started oh, cool. on episode last last episode, cool. and he wanted to know that you guys are also in the same universe now with the I hate slash fuck universe, right? With I, I hate this that. place. I saw that, Kyle. I see you, Kyle. <laughs> and I was just saying, well, you guys are both an image, right? This books are both released by Image, right. and so I was like, when is the I hate this place yeah, and I, I hate, hate Fairland crossover coming? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My lawyers would love that so much, um, but uh, yeah, it was I. Mine, of course, I've told this story a million times, but. I was always going to call it fuck fairyland and, and Kirkman and I went back and forth on it. And Eric and I went back and forth on it. And it wasn't until retailers actually, mm -hmm. we, we just decided I was going to call it. I hate. And the retailers were the ones that were like, Hey, can I get, can my shop do a fuck one? And we had enough retailers ask us that we we're like, well, we'll just do both. Yeah. Issue, so that's where that came from. That was again, so Kyle Stark says on the on the podcast with that myth. He was like, I really it was in the moment, uh, same thing. It was a it was a skybound at this time because it's a skybound right. book. Uh, and so Kirkman and him and all the guys over there, they're just like talking about like uh, retailers not going to like this because they can't yeah. put it on the shop next to other things and so on and so forth. And then they did the same thing. And right. he goes, Let's just do a variant of it. And he goes, I should have said, We hate this place. I, I, I not nothing against Scotty Young and his stuff, but I wish I would have said we hate this place. It is a couple. There's two people. Yeah. It could have been a we hate this place. Right. But he says I did this. I hate. He goes, man, eh, whatever. Good. Now I live it's in the all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> I was like, ah, don't worry. I don't think Scotty cares them. <laughs> no, man. It's listen. There's nothing new under the sun. We're all just playing around with with. Uh, we're all just playing pretend on paper, man. We get to make comics. There's not a lot that bothers me, so I'm good. <laughs> So yeah, and uh, uh, one last thing I actually want to chat about too is uh, we've had David Stoll on the podcast, and David Stoll did the three D model of the house in uh, Oh right, you, yeah, the Me You Love yeah. in the Dark. And he did the, the three, yeah. he did it. So he just wrote his book uh, with Adam Caesar over at uh, Dark Horse, which was the um, Dead Mall, and so he did the same thing with the mall where he did the three right. D model of the entire thing. That is such a badass thing to have, and I'm so glad you credited him in the yeah. book. Well, yeah, I mean, it was amazing. And I, I mean, I have to give it to Jorge and him. Like Jorge, you know, I just said here, you know, design the house. I don't know what it looks like. Just this, you know. And, yeah. and Jorge's mom was a professor in architecture in Venezuela. And so she kind of took Jorge's sketches and kind of gave it. And here's what you should do. And then, yeah, David came in and I mean, they they crushed it. Like, I mean, what an important part of the visuals of that book. It was just uh, astounding. It's yeah, really special. And yeah, there, there was no way we weren't going to give him credit for sure. I feel like he's got a future in his hand. It's like, what do you do for like, it's like, yeah. like comic book writer, artist, colorist, letterer, yeah. model designer. <laughs> he's, yeah, that was super crucial. It was great. And that's that, yeah, just, I wanted to give that shout out to him. And the last thing was, is that obviously I'm a big fan of David Har uh, Harper's podcast off panel. Yeah. And yeah. the last time you were on with him, you literally were recording or releasing the episode the day before you announced that I hate Fairlane was coming back. Uh -huh. So I want to say that tomorrow when this podcast release, some big news is going to hit. Big know? news <laughs> is, not, what is tomorrow. Well, Thursday, probably. Yeah. I don't think so. I'll, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be inking and coloring this cover. That's the big news. <laughs> it was just kind of funny. You're like, yeah, I got some news. And I'm like, oh my God, it literally was off by a day that you couldn't talk about. I hate Fairlane. I know. Anyway, yeah. Fairlane, but 
for sure. I'm sure you'll be back on on David's podcast. Yeah, I love it. I'm sure he, he's so good. He's yes. so good. He's off so gallivanting good. in France or something like that right now. Oh, so. he's so fancy. I know, right? Uh, but yeah, so I hate Fairlands still out and, and grab the stuff. I mean, I hate Fairlands great. We read it for, actually uh, volume one. Uh, we read for our book club at the LCS. People were very very happy with that. So exciting. Uh, people were happy, excited about that. And then obviously the new one is out now on the shelf. Yes. So make sure you grab, guys all grab that. And then just, is it just scottyyoung.com? Yep, I'm pretty sure. I should know that. I think you're probably bookmarked. So that's why I, didn't. I was going to say, you got all the stuff I know. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's like, so I, you know, my wife was like, we had a conversation when we moved into this house, a few pieces of Marvel or our comic book artwork can be out in public. The rest of it comes right. into the studio. Right. And, and so there's a, a sketch from George Perez out there. Uh, a little Sharpie sketch when I met George Perez and the um, Georgie Pennywise black one out of a hundred or the only a hundred. Oh prints, yes. Yeah. That's out there. And I said, that's the only two things that are allowed to be out in the living room. And that goes, and, that makes good living room art. That's good. And living I have room. a friend of mine who's a huge Stephen King fan that every time she comes over, she's like, you want to give me that. Right. I'm like, <laughs> you're, funny. <laughs> you're funny. You're funny over there. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. So check out scottyyoung.com. Stupid fresh mess. has all kinds of cool stuff. I'm guessing you're going to have more variants and things like that coming out. Soon oh yeah. We actually, the next couple months are going to be really good. I think Megan's been working on a newsletter today to re- tell everybody about what we got coming up like very quickly. So Yep, we got a lot lined up. That's what I'm working on today. The Spider-Man one is uh is that you guys get a little bit of that. That's awesome. That's that's, that's amazing. So uh, keep it up. Uh, we're loving it. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, keep the keep the young variants coming, but also keep some stuff create our own or some writing stuff oh, out for there. Sure. Uh, we could have talked for hours about not doing interiors anymore and only writing. <laughs> but I'm not not gonna get into that. We'll get the, we'll get we'll do that one next time. Yeah. See, you're a comic creator. That's all that matters. That's that's, that's you that's know. It. it doesn't matter what I you're doing. I draw a lot and I write a lot. So I'm I'm checking all the boxes just in different ways today. And you're a family man. You gotta have time to spend with your family too. So absolutely. You you I really appreciate it, Scotty. Uh, check Thank out Scotty at, at Scotty Young on all social media as well, yep. and yep. Uh, ScottyYoung.com as well as grab April 26th, grab issue six of uh, Strange Academy and then all the trades and stuff like that. So awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. 